Hey, what's going on, guys? Hope everyone's been doing well and you had a great week. I'm trying to talk about a pretty common and frequent question I've been asked recently, which is about the day-to-day -day or daily life of a coder, programmer, software engineer, any of those words. Um, so first, before I say anything in this video, the first thing I just want to mention is that answering this question of what the typical day is like is super dynamic and it's going to change across any person, any engineer, any team, any company. So it's just something that's really dynamic. And whatever I say here, it's not going to be what's applicable to all those situations. All right. So what I want to do is just um, kind of give my ref a reference point of two years I spent working on this agile team and what that was like and what I did on a typical day. And hopefully that's going to be a good baseline or reference for anyone that might be interested in what daily life's like. All right, so let's just get started. All right, so first thing that we have to talk about is this word, agile, agile, how do you, however you say it. But it's a word, it's one of those software words that's thrown around a lot and it carries a lot of different meanings. People interpret it and implement it in very different ways. But what it pretty much is, is just a software development methodology if you will it's kind of just one way to go about implementing a software project but it's not the only way it just happens to be kind of popular it's a little buzzy and this word is thrown around a lot so what it really means uh, it's pretty simple so what agile means is that software is changed and released pretty rapidly in either one week or two week cycles so the software is very flexible or agile because it's changing very often and it's getting released with new updates very often. Um, I think back in the day, maybe some years ago, the software process might have been like new updates every three months, every six months, and it was very slow. So the only thing about agile is it's faster. So how is it exactly faster and what does it really entail? So we're just going to go through a couple points of what my team at the time interpreted it to mean and what we did. So let's just get started with A. Okay, so the core, one of the core ideas behind Agile is this idea of a sprint, which just represents a period in time. And for my team, a sprint was two weeks. And what exactly is a sprint? Well, I guess a sprint would be considered like a raw development cycle time, and you would measure all your development in respect to a sprint. So it's like, oh, I have a couple easy tasks. I can finish it in one sprint. Oh, crap, I have something huge to do. Maybe this is going to take two or three sprints to do. So sprinting is just kind of like a delineation or granularity level of development. And it's commonly two weeks. Um, I've never seen it or I've never done it when it's not two weeks. So I'm putting two weeks here. but just consider it as a raw development cycle. Uh, the next important point of Agile is uh, the release process. So the release process actually starts immediately after each sprint completes. So our release process was one week to finish a release. So what this means is that immediately after a sprint is complete, a release process is going to start from that sprint, which takes one week. And at the end of that week, we'll have an official release that's out that encompasses all the features in the sprint that we worked on right before then. So if you kind of got that, it's kind of like sprint development, then release, sprint, then release, sprint, then release. And it kind of just alternates like that forever almost. All right. So we'll talk more about release later. It was actually a different team that handles the release cycle versus a team that's doing the sprint, which is the more development. But I'll talk more about how different teams handled releases um, soon. So let's just keep going through some of these points. Um, Stand-up meetings are also pretty common in this kind of agile environment. Uh, we had three stand-up meetings a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right in the morning when we got in, and they were all about 15 to 20 minutes long. So what exactly is a stand-up meeting? Well, you physically stand up, so you're not really in a chair. They make you stand up around like a whiteboard usually, and you do like this sort of like go around the circle and everyone shares. 
But the reason why it's so quick is that everyone on the team only shares like one or two minutes of what they've been working on and what's blocking them. So the most important point of a stand-up meeting is to make sure everyone can continue their work and they're not blocked by any way. So, you know, if I'm working along and it's like, oh, crap, Joe didn't finish that feature he was supposed to do and now I can't do my work, some urgent thing like that you would probably bring it up at a stand-up meeting. And it's just like an easy way for the whole team to sync up quickly in the mornings. All right, so this happened three times a week for us, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and it was right in the morning. Um, going off of that, we also had more, more real standard meetings, like team meetings, like weekly team meetings where people would go more in depth of exactly what they're working on, um, what they're going to do for the next week, what they did in the previous week. And this is uh, like more of a standard meeting, if you will, when everyone gets around and talks in depth of what they're doing. So we had that once a week. Um, anyways, let's keep going. All right, so let's just touch back on this release cycle real quick. So let's just think about a development team doing sprints, all right? So we're working in these like two-week chunks, two weeks, two weeks two weeks, two weeks. And for developers, sprints are back to back. So when we would finish a two week sprint, we would start the next sprint. And after that two weeks, we would start the other sprint. But like I said, there's a different team that handles releases, right? And those releases start exactly after one of the sprints ended. So if F is the timeline for developers, the release team, or we call them the ops or QA team, it would be like a two week sprint from dev. And then they would work one week to make the release happen and so forth. So there'd be another two week sprint. Sorry, this is just weird typing. Another sprint from development and they would work the week after for development. So you might be asking, oh wait, that cycle doesn't work because they're actually chilling for a whole week right because if you check out this pattern if they only make a release after our sprints they're actually chilling for another week right so are they actually chilling well no they're not actually chilling because how our team was actually structured with how our team was structured was that many many different teams were on these sprint cycles but there was actually one release team handling like five different software projects. So if you imagine that one team is handling the releases for five different software projects and five software projects are all on this sprinting schedule, then there's definitely no time to chill for the release team. So they're always preparing, testing, and releasing updates to the software. And the developers, everyone's a developer, but the people on the sprints are always doing back-to-back -back sprints. So. That's kind of how we structured it. Um, so hopefully you got the gist of that. Um, the cycle is a little weird, but hopefully that made sense. Um, the next thing I wanna bring up, and we're gonna talk more about it down here, is this concept of ticketing, which is also super important to Agile, and it's one of the most like annoying things any developer will say. Uh, but pretty much, we use this system called Jira. Um, Jira is a pretty popular one. It's just one of many ticketing so software. And what are tickets? But tickets are pretty much a way to track your tasks in progress. So th they can be called task management systems, ticketing systems, but pretty much it's just like a one-stop shop way to track all your tasks and how you've been progressing and working on them. So they track pretty much everything. They track like, which tasks have you not started? Which tasks have you actually started? Which ones did you reject? Which ones are you actually working on? Which ones have you completed? Which ones have you tested? They track these things in like crazy amounts of detail and it gives, you know, everybody's working on a bunch of tickets at the same time. So, and once so many people are working on so many different things, you do need some way to track it all and usually, you use some kind of software to track it. And we use this thing called Jira, which is a little crappy. I don't use it anymore, but um, yeah, that's something that's also essential for this system to work. And last but not least, what I want to mention is that everything 
I mentioned here in the sprints, this is just one software team. Like we had four developers going on one sprint section. We had four developers doing one schedule of sprinting, but there were five teams of four developers each on their own schedule. So you can just multiply this whole thing out, x5, x10, and you can imagine all the stuff that's going on. So that is some core agile stuff, but I think we talked about that enough and let's just keep moving on to some other daily activities. Okay, so the next section that I wanna talk about is the ops, sometimes called DevOps or QA. This was all bundled under one team that we called the release team. Um, this is just the naming, it's just how we named it, but obviously let me just talk about what it encompassed. First, we already talked about in the first section that this team was responsible for the release cycle of all our software, which is extremely important, like making sure all those releases are well tested, run well, all that good stuff. So we already kind of talked about this point, but they test code at the end of each sprint and prepare release. So you can imagine all these different software teams are doing their sprints week after week. The release team has to keep up and make sure they prepare the official version updates for all these teams like v1 v1.1 v1.2 and they're doing that all day every day so that's part of their work um, i just also want to talk about other responsibilities this team had that were really important to the overall software project um, and let's just go through them so another thing they do is they do kind of it system work and what this means for developers is that every single developer, especially when the project is really big, everyone has to work in the same environment or all things get like batshit crazy. So everyone's computer has to more or less be set, this, set up the same to make development a lot easier. Um, you can just imagine if like, if there's like 30 developers working on one project and they just start customizing their machines, installing custom software, installing custom libraries, and just going, you know, getting really custom with their environment. Some stuff is going to work on some computers. Some stuff's not going to work on other computers. And it's just going to be like a development nightmare. So another thing that this release team was responsible for is making sure everyone's computer or everyone's system was, that, was set up the same. So what that means was same Linux, same packages, same libraries, etc. Everyone, we try to, this is easier said than done, but another thing they did was try to make sure everybody was working on the same playing field. So hope you got that. Another thing we did, um, we didn't really use cloud services on this team, so they also managed a lot of the computers and the hardware and all the computer setup our server room, all that stuff. Like these days you have Heroku or AWS, which is really easy, but the team here, they would manage all our hardware too. And you know, all the computers in the back room, they would have to like actually physically go back there, unplug them, all that stuff. Um, and finally, they, they, and finally, sorry guys, they manage the releases. We already talked about that, but another important thing they do is they handled the deployment and integration of the software. So what does integration mean? Well, integration kind of means like the seamless integration of software as people develop it. So once someone makes an update to a code, it has to go and get pushed up to some kind of central repository and become integrated. And that process of integrating is actually very, very tricky. and there's a lot of systems that help out with how easy that integration becomes. So another part of this team's job was to help out with how easily and how well software could be deployed and integrated into the system with like 50 people working on it at the same time. All right, um, so that's about it for that team that I wanna talk about. Um, that's gonna be part one of the video. I still have two big points to cover, ticketing, and the typical day. Um, I'm going to put both of those points in part two of this video, which is going to be immediately after this. So just stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right, guys. Thanks.